working on one of these Panasonic Travel Visions, the CT-101. It's a 1.5 inch color LCD and at the time it was considered the world's smallest and lightest color TV during its time. Now that is true because during time they really didn't have any like that. You had mostly black and white sets that were about the size and stuff like that. So it probably is true but overall I worked on a few of these models. I'm going to go over a common issue with these and I know it's with all five of the ones I worked on. One of them is in the power supply section itself which I'll disconnect because I was doing some testing and stuff like that. But one of the capacitors right here which is the 10 microfarad one goes bad on this and then not only that too these connectors right here end up getting cold solder joints and stuff like that and then the rest of the part of the boards don't actually get power and so forth so I went ahead and fixed all that the other thing too I fixed was broken trace on this board here and that was from a leaky capacitor and it ended up eating through the trace and stuff so I ended up doing repairs on that and then for the audio side to fix the audio problem I did have to change the capacitor right here by the CRT neck and if I can move it out a little bit it's right there by that switch right there you can see it right there I changed a few of the capacitors right here and then one on the tuner board itself and so forth you gotta be very careful with this because you don't want to bend this back and forth because you can actually break these pieces of metal right here but I ended up did getting this going now so I'm going to go and plug it in and show you so let me go and plug in the power supply section which is this board right here and hold on I'm just trying to be careful with it and lay this out like this here and I'll just plug in for example I think we'll put the auxiliary line we'll use that and then I'll see if I can get the power here and it's right here Okay, hopefully we'll get video and as you can see there is video. We're also getting color now. Before we were missing part of the colors and that was due to the chromo section actually being bad too so I fixed that. But it's pretty common on these devices about that old. What happens is the small capacitors, the seals end up breaking down, the electrolytic leaks out and causes havoc on the board. In this particular cap you can see is bad. Some of them just went completely open circuit so that pretty much fixed all the problems and also fixed the tuner and stuff like that. I went ahead and tested that array. So I'm going to go ahead and get this back in the chassis. Once I get done getting it back in the chassis, I'll be back, right back with you when I'm done. Another common problem with this particular model is that the plastic itself deteriorates and becomes brittle. And you can see here, there's a chunk right here that I had to glue back. I had to glue back little pieces here and there because it's cracked. And few pieces here and there but it's common you'll see sometimes with pieces missing or the plastic itself just deteriorates because it becomes brittle and parts just start falling there's really not much you can do about it except to glue the plastic back together if you got the pieces and stuff so I'm gonna go and get that chassis back in there and hopefully it'll still work I know there's a couple of people that thought you had to take the CRT out to get the whole entire board out and you don't. All you have to do is just take this piece out right here which slides into there and it's clipped in. Just slide this up carefully and once you slide this out this whole assembly here will flip out that way. When you put the board back in you put it back in the same way and just make sure you seat these boards right here into the slots that's inside the case there and make sure it's not moving and it's stood and that's how you get this whole assembly back into the chassis. So I went ahead and reassembled the world's smallest color CRT television set. And you can see how it's laid out. And this was considered the world's smallest in 1983. And the date code is right there. You can see your CRT, your high voltage section there, your power supplies upside down, the tuner board sideways, your video chrome or audio board on the bottom. But you can see how they got everything pretty much cramped in there but this was considered state of the art in 1983 but I'm going to go and power on and see if it still works after reassembling back together before I put it all the way back together and realize I forgot something <laughs> but here you go and obviously you can hear audio already let's see if it comes on the video and I do got a video source of camcorder that I put right here and it's doing the feedback because the microphone like in here the audio is actually working though. And before the audio didn't work at all. 
And you can see some of the stuff on my bench there, but it is working good and it's pretty clear for being as small as it is and stuff like that. It's really crisp and clear on the actual CRT and the camera really doesn't do justice. Let me go ahead and disconnect it there. And you can hear how loud the audio is and that's the way it's supposed to be. Before, it was only getting about this loud and that was because there was a short hit capacitor in the audio path which I went ahead and changed out and fixed the problem. So now it's nice and loud again. Tuner, you can see here by tuning it, there's a bar that goes right there that goes down and you can actually read by where the bar lands on the indicator right there. And for UHF, you can see it's green and when you go ahead and turn to VHF, the bar turns red and then you read the bottom there and that tells you what channel you're on. But it does work. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find any without no antenna hooked up to it, but it does work pretty good now. Went ahead and fixed the color issue too because the chroma section actually had some broken traces on there. I was able to fix it so I get all three of my colors now thankfully. So it works great. I'm going to go and get the top cover back on there and then I'll be right back when I fully reassemble the set so I can show you how it looks when it's actually fully reassembled. So went ahead and reassembled the Panasonic CT101 1.5 inch Ward's smallest and lightest CRT color TV set that was available in 1983 and you can see there this is what it would look like sitting on your table pretty much and to make the CRT actually seem better they gave you this magnifying piece which pretty much you just slide over here you clip it into place and what it does it makes the picture look a lot bigger than what it really is so it magnifies the CRT and then to take it out you just simply slide it out and then you can just use it that way too now let me go and unplug this and I'll show you and it looks on the side the controls and stuff but you can see your color tint brightness contrast and vertical holds on the side here and your tuner and volume and power button is all right there your DC inputs there Here's where your AV, your line inputs in the back, and then for your external antenna, you can hook up to it too, which it did come with the adapter. Here's the side view of it. This is just a carry handle. Your antenna's on the top, and then your batteries pretty much go in there and you can use either a rechargeable battery pack, which is this middle pin right here, or you can use the battery holder where you can put your double A's in and use that, which it did come with both, but I don't got it in there currently right now. You can see by part of it even chipped off right there too. But overall, it is in full working condition and this is what it would look like. And yeah, go ahead and hang on, demonstrate the audio too. That's pretty much how loud it would go. And there you go. So it is fully functional now. I'm going to go and clean it up a little bit more. See if I can find a missing piece or even another case for this thing. I hope I can come across another case maybe I can find one with a CRT broken or something and find another chassis that's actually still in one piece I doubt it only because it seems like all of them have the brittle plastic problem so it might just stay like that it's fine at least it's in one piece and it's working so this concludes this video